Mm -hmm. And if any of them say the secret word, they'll split an extra hundred bucks. And the word tonight is uh, book. George, on with the show. Uh, Groucho, uh, Miss Jean uh, Wilkinson and Mr. Nick Romanos are waiting to talk to you. They so, are? Yes. How do you know they're waiting? Well, I, I take How do you know they haven't fled by this time? Huh? <laughs> well, I'd like to, so would you come in, folks, and meet Groucho Marx? Uh, well, welcome, welcome to your betcha life. Say the sea. I told you they weren't waiting. <laughs> welcome to your betcha life. Say the secret word and... Uh, secret word, if you say it, you each get $50. It's a common word, something you see every day. Uh, Gene Wilkinson and Nick Romano say, well, good evening, Nick. Uh, good evening. That may conceivably be the last thing we have to say to each other tonight. <laughs> Gene uh, Wilkinson, uh, are, are you married? No, I'm not, Dr. You're not married, huh? What a waste of natural resources, huh? <laughs> As a fine believer in conservation, I think you should get married immediately. I would. Are you, are you engaged? No, I'm not. You're not, huh? No. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. May I ask your age? Sure. How old are you? I'm 18. 18. Well, I'm glad to hear that, too. Now, uh, would you like to take my daughter, Melinda, to the movies some night? Uh, Me? Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to. Uh, well, I would go along, you know, just as... Uh, <laughs> I mean, just as a chaperone. Oh. What kind of a job have you got, Jeannie? I'm a student nurse, nurse, nurse. A nurse? <laughs> nurse at St. Vincent's oh. College of Nursing. Oh, well, I've had an awful pain right here in the back of my neck. Do you want me to rub it, Greg? I certainly do. <laughs> okay? Well, it's kind of brief, but... Uh... <laughs> Now, how is it I never had a nurse like you? The kind I always got that makes me yearn for the anesthetic. Maybe you didn't go to the right hospital. Well, perhaps right, that's true. Well, the last hospital I, I can't go back because I still owe them $330. <laughs> and they're holding my appendix as a deposit. <laughs> now, what is the toughest part of your job? Shoving vanilla custard down your patient's gullets? Well, I, I don't know. I don't think any of it's very tough, Groucho, because no. I really like it. Oh, well, that, that's good. That, that makes a good noise. And uh, I, I hope not to get sick, but uh, if I ever do, I certainly will communicate with Eugene. Uh, well, I hope you even do. Even if you're out of the hospital, huh? <laughs> now, Mr. Romanus, I'm not looking forward to this, but I guess I have to talk to you, too. Huh? <laughs> Where do you hail from? Oh, I'm born in uh, Crestinon, Greece. You were born, I didn't ask you what you cook your fried potatoes in. I, uh, all I want to know is where you are from. Creston, on Greece, Greece. You were born in Greece, Yes, huh? sir. Wasn't it rather sticky? Uh -huh. <laughs> your name is Nick and you were born in Greece, huh? Yeah. Are, are you the, you're not Nick the Greek, huh? The no, famous I'm not, gambler, I'm not. Huh? I have a little habits of his, but... Oh, you do, huh? <laughs> Well, are you 100% Greek? Mm, not exactly. 20% Greek and 80% Russian. I don't understand. How, how can you be Nick the Greek and still be a Russian? I don't understand either. No. <laughs> well, have you ever nicked a Greek? Oh, I met him. I met him. No, I didn't mean have you met him. I, have you ever nicked a Greek? No, I don't. I no. don't know what you're saying, but no. I still say don't. <laughs> well, very few people know what I'm saying. I mean, that's the secret of my security. Are you a white Russian? White. I'm afraid of white Russian, I'm afraid of red Russian, I'm just a plain yellow Russian. <laughs> How long did you remain in Russia? Oh, till they chased me out, till a revolution came in and here I went out. I have enough brains to get out. <laughs> well, what did you do for a living after you scrammed out of the Iron Curtain? Oh, after I left Russia in Italy, I became right away a ballet dancer. I, are you married, huh? I hope so. You I really am. do? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh -huh. How'd you meet your wife? Oh, I met her in Paris, and uh, she was a ballet dancer, too. I met her in some French cafe, you know. Oh, did you meet her in midair, or...? Uh... No, no, I met her. She was sitting with other dancers. And I met her, you know, I was a pretty no bad-looking guy, and I flirt with everybody, and I flirt with her, and uh, this is how I met her. Would you flirt with her? My wife is sitting in the audience. I would still. I would take a chance. I would. 
Well, you have some of the gambling blood of Nick oh, the Greek. Sure. Uh, <laughs> now, when you met your wife in, in this uh, Parisian cafe, was this love at first sight? No, no, she hated me. She really did. Why, why did she hate you? Oh, I was uh, fresh. Uh -huh. And I was aggressive, you know. And, uh, In what way? What did you do? Well, I used to take her out and I, uh, she used to say to me, I don't mind you open the door and go first, but don't slam it or knock my teeth <laughs> off. Uh. I realize you're just being facetious. Otherwise, you better not go home tonight at all. Oh, no, she don't mind. The moment I get a laugh, she don't mind. She oh. married me for my laughs. Oh, I see. I could have speak very good English by now on. I've been married 18 years with her, but she wants me to speak with an accent. The only thing I could give her is the accent, so you know, I'm still married. She's sitting there someplace. Oh. <laughs> what made you decide to come to America, Nick? Uh, came to America, she married me then, and, uh... Was she American? Oh, sure. Oh. Good American, too, from Philadelphia. <laughs> very good. I was very happy she brought me to America, too. Well, I'm, I'm glad you like it here, Nick. I love it. Like it is nothing. It's not a compliment. It's loving. Loving. Yes. That's, that's true. Now, what sort of work do you do now, Nick? Oh, I don't do nothing now. I'm available. Oh. I, Every job I get, it they fire me. <laughs> they fire me. The last job what I was. What was the last job you had? Oh, the last job I was. They give me a title, sort of a matter D or personality fellow or reception. You know, people come in and I receive it in an Italian restaurant. Shall I mention the name? Yes. yes I yes. can't give a plug because yes. the guy who owns the restaurant is a friend of mine. Is uh, Villa Capri. A good Italian restaurant. You were Wonderful. the maitre d' at the Villa uh, the Capri? the Villa Capri, I was a maitre d' till they fired me. <laughs> Just recently. You didn't. know, that's, that's sheer poetry, Nick. The maitre d' at the Villa Capri. Oh, I never knew you may You may be another Shelley or Lovelace. Who knows? <laughs> Did, do you know Lovelace? <laughs> Who is she? <laughs> it was a he, it was a poet. Okay. What kind of smorgasbord did you dispense at this hash joint? Oh, well, in this hash joint, they have uh, very good food. Very good Italian food, this is true. They have what they call uh, lasagna, they have spaghetti with sauce, marinara, meat sauce, and they have chicken alla cacciatore. I learned this very quick. Mm -hmm. now, which of these Italian dishes is your own personal favorite? No, I hate Italian food. <laughs> I see you, Nick, is to get back into ballet dancing. Because I think your next dance will be the afternoon of a meatball. I'm the only one dancer who could stand still and break a leg. I am, I have a mileage in me. I crack. When I dance, I crack like a castanet. It's my bones. Oh. Did you, know. you break a leg while dancing? No, while standing, I broke a leg. <laughs> while dancing, I break the whole body. Oh. <laughs> well, the time is, is up for conversation. Let's play You Bet Your Life. Uh, you both know the rules of the game. Huh? And you know your partners and one answer between them. Now you selected, name the profession. Let's see if you can correctly name the professions of these famous people. The little sums are easy, the big sums are hard. Ten. No, hundred. Hundred. Ten, ten. Ninety? Ninety. Do whatever you want. I don't need money. <laughs> uh, how about seven? All right. Seventy. Seventy? Seventy. What was Johann Gutenberg's profession? He was a printer. That's right, he was a printer. Don't go any further. You now have $170. <laughs> now what? Um. Take it easy, take it easy. <laughs> you want 80, you want 50, is it 60? Have 50 or nothing, so. No. 50. All right, do it, do it, whatever you want. I don't know. Why don't we try 80? I'll try 80. 80? <laughs> what was George Heppelwhite's profession? He's trying 80. Heppelwhite, very famous name. Oh. Uh, and if you don't know, guess. Is he a writer? No, he was a very famous furniture designer and cabinet maker. Oh. You uh, now have $85. Well, now, don't get discouraged. 
Fifty. Fifty. Good. Good. Fifty. What was Cezanne's profession? C e z a n n e s. Well. <laughs> well, what you look at me? I don't know nothing about it. I have no profession. Well, Unless we nothing. ask him about spaghetti, I'm afraid we're not going to get any answer at all. Was he a cook or something? A cook? No, no. He was a very famous painter. Cezanne. You uh, now have forty-two dollars fifty cents. You are sinking slowly into your spaghetti, Nick. Yes. Uh -huh. Now, this is your last chance to beat the other couples, and I want you to get this now. Higher ones, you know? Choose higher. I don't mind. Why don't we choose that? Do you want 90? 90. Why don't we try 90? All right. What was Arthur Schopenhauer's profession? <laughs> now, you should know that. Who, me? Yes, of course. Why? I don't know why, but you should uh, know it. I think he was a conductor or something in a music. No, he was a philosophical writer. Uh, I knew I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wound up with twenty-one dollars twenty-five cents. Well, that's a shame. I'm sorry. I'm going to give you one question at least to bring your winnings up to twenty-five dollars. Now, this is a pretty tough question. I want you to think very carefully. In what sport do you use a tennis ball? <laughs> In baseball. <laughs> It's golf. Golf. <laughs> well, Roger, we have a schoolgirl ready to meet you now. Uh, she's Miss Shirley Spencer, and her partner is one of America's most popular newspaper columnists, Mr. Henry McLemore. Say the secret word, and you each get an extra fifty dollars. It's a common way, something you'll find around the house. Heinrich, I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see you. And uh, Shirley Spencer, I'm glad to see you. Thank you very much. Shirley, you're the oldest, so I'll start with you. <laughs> this is no reflection on your charms, Henry. Thank you. Brad. You're a fine broth of a boy. You look like a kind of a heavy Johnny Mercer. Not too heavy. I don't mean you. You. Uh, <laughs> I look like a heavy Johnny Mercer. Yeah. I'm glad to look like anything. I'm scared to death. <laughs> I don't know why you should be. I'm more frightened than you are. Shirley, how old are you? Thirteen. Well, how many years have you been thirteen? <laughs> thirteen. Thirteen years. You're twenty-six, really, huh? <laughs> where are you from, Shirley? Indianapolis, Indiana. Indianapolis. I'm born there, huh? raised there, and that's where I live now. <laughs> oh. Henry, let's get down to cases. Huh? Do you know I never miss your column? I think it's just wonderful, and I'm one of your great admirers. Well, Groucho, I can say that right back to you. I never miss your show. Is that so? Well, who was on the show last week? <laughs> Wish you hadn't asked me that. <clears throat> I got a free ticket to a soccer game and I missed it. <laughs> Where are you from, Henry? I'm from Macon, Georgia. Oh, you know Nunley Johnson? He's from Georgia. I know Nunley pretty well. Yes. He would still be there, but he was pursued by a posse a few years Same ago. Same one. Almost caught me. Yes. <laughs> Charlie, what brings you to Los Angeles? And don't say the bus, because that's a very old joke. Well, I, um... Model around the country. Um, you model around the country? Yes, for the Young Miss America contest. I won that a few months ago. I see. Oh, you're Young Miss America. Huh? Yes. But when do you go to school? Well, I'll be back in school um, probably by Monday. Uh, are you looking forward to that? Yes. You like school? Yes, very much. What kind of a contest was this? Uh, that you won, Shirley. Was it marbles or shooting pool or what? Yeah. No, uh, it was a contest. It was judged on poise and beauty and health and charm. Mm -hmm. And um, there were a hundred cities out of the 48 states that and each were one, uh, represented. A hundred cities. And there were a hundred girls and you uh, won this going away, as they say. Huh? Well, Henry, let's get back to your column, which I never miss. How many papers carry it? Well, I don't know because I'm afraid to ask, I'm afraid there's none, but uh, <laughs> I'd guess well over 200, Groucho. So you must make an enormous amount of money. Eh? I'm just rolling in wealth. <laughs> Is it fun rolling in wealth? Huh? I've never done that. Huh? Well, it's next to Clover, I know nothing better. <laughs> well, it must be a lot harder than it looks grinding out a funny column every day. How do you decide what to write about? Well, it's, it is kind of tough. You never know because you... 
You write about misfortune mainly, huh? Misfortune chiefly. Yes. But you wake up and you maybe have a little headache and you make a noise and Mary will say, men, when they're a little tired or they're a little sick, they not like women and quiet and all, they sound like they're dying. <laughs> So then that gives you an idea, well, my idea being... You hop right up? I hop right up and get that typewriter and write it down. Because what is the use of being sick if nobody knows it? <laughs> I mean, if you just stretch out there and look healthy, they're not going to cook you any beef broth. They're going to do nothing for you. <laughs> you might as well be as healthy as a statue. They're not going to do a thing for you. The thing to do is groan, moan, That's yell, true. and sigh. <laughs> And you get a lot of letters from husbands that agree with you. Well, why do you yodel? Aren't you pretty old for that? Hmm? Yodel? You're still, your voice is... Well, it's just because I'm with her. Oh. Then you'll open your fan mail. Well, sometimes I get as many as a postcard a year. <laughs> and a man will say, you must be the luckiest man in the world. You don't have any office hours. You don't have to get your bus and put on a blue suit. The, best, the happiest man in the world is the one who can get up at 7.30, eat a breakfast, run for that bus, and get out of the house. <laughs> you stay around the house, and a woman won't do anything she's supposed to do. And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> You're getting an right. argument from me, Henry. I'm, uh, all right, but I'm an old veteran of this sort of thing. <laughs> so you find yourself working yourself to death. The happiest man in the world who has an office 52 miles from home. That's true. <laughs> Henry, I, you do a great deal of traveling, and uh, you're always getting into mischief, it seems to me, from this column. What is your favorite yarn about yourself? Is there any that you could discuss well, publicly? I, I hate to make these confessions about a columnist, but there are times that a columnist just has to dream up things. Mm -hmm. You mean I you would... fabricate stories? If yeah, that's a big word, but if it means what I think it is... It yeah. means lying. <laughs> well, that's it. That's it. That's, that's the word. <laughs> But I was in the part of Switzerland that had very few mountains in it, but I knew my readers would like me to climb a mountain <laughs> and would like me to find a St. Bernard dog. <laughs> so I wrote a story about the horrors of climbing, I think it's Mont Blanc. Yeah. I wasn't Isn't that a dessert? If it is, it's never one we serve in Georgia. <laughs> there is a mountain. But they wrote... <laughs> Go ahead and keep climbing. So I wrote there. about the dogs and how the dogs rescued me and how I was out there four or five days and nobody came to find me and just the horrors of it. I mean, it made those Everett climbers sound like child's play. And then the Swiss government sued the office for a million dollars. Claiming that there were no mountains then? Claiming there were no mountains, no dogs, and what I'd said was a complete, as you said, fabrication. No. <laughs> But the lovely thing about it is the office couldn't let me go because they had to keep me as a witness. <laughs> so it was the best insurance I ever had for a job. Well, that, the, the moral of that is just keep fabricating. That's right. <laughs> well, you're a very distinguished journalist, Henry. Have you ever won the Pulitzer Prize? No, I haven't because unfortunately they've still got people on it that can read. <laughs> no, no, I don't I think do that. Want, I, have, do, I have one distinction you might be interested in. I'm I, interested in every distinction you have, Henry. Well, that won't take long. <laughs> I hold the world's record for a human being for running Churchill Downs. That's where the Kentucky Derby is. Yeah. You mean on the track? Yes, yeah, at 4 o'clock in the morning in a dinner jacket. <laughs> that's, Yan that's Yankee talk for tuxedo. Oh. <laughs> well, did you have a jockey on you at the time? No, but I was carrying what we call the full Kentucky load. <laughs> Well, you certainly got in the spirit of the thing, didn't you? <laughs> but I had been going to derbies for years and read how terrible it was for the horse <laughs> to run a mile and a quarter, so I said, well, I just think I'll go out and run that fool thing myself. <laughs> you know, you shouldn't wear a dinner jacket at the Kentucky Davy. <laughs> well, I, it's the only thing I had at the moment. Next I, time you run around the track, wear what the other horses wear, white tie and tail. <laughs> Well, it's been educational and fun talking to you, Henry, and also this uh, little woman over here. In the race for the $2,000, the first couple won $21.25. Now, you selected uh, animals and birds. 
Remember, the more the questions worth, the harder it is, and we want one answer between you. Now, uh... <laughs> you could be at nothing. What are you going to start with, huh? <laughs> Have you met Mr. Fenneman? No, Do you stop anybody race? that good-looking scares me to death. <laughs> That's nice, sir. Do you That's stop nice. rate the shuffleboard game on a tramp steamer <laughs> and at uh, Bali High, wasn't it? I think it was Hawaii the last oh, time. I'm all right. How are you? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you want to start with? Ten to a hundred. Oh, uh, Seventy. Seventy. All right. What is the name of the rodent native to the Andes of South America, whose pearl gray fur is valued so highly? Chinchilla. That's right. Chinchilla is right. <laughs> Well, you're off to a good start. I have one hundred and seventy dollars. I predict Henry's going to be a uh, tough one to knock off here. Now what? You might as well try eighty. Eighty. What breed of domesticated cat is born with a very short tail? Okay. What is it? Manx. What? It's the Manx cat. No, I want you to say Manx, and then I'd say you're welcome. You see? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to stand there and love something. Like You now have two hundred. Should we try it again? What kind of a cat was it? Thank you. All right. <laughs> I'm all right. How are you? Howdy, hi. <laughs> all right. Now what? You have two fifty right now. Ninety. All right. The Morgan is an American breed of what animal? The Morgan is the breed of two things. He's also a, basically he's a horse, but there's also a dog. Was a coon dog, but if you want it, what he is, he's a horse. Well, as a man who ran around the track, I certainly have to take <laughs> the dog. But there is, you take a horse, definitely for the question, but there is a in North dog. Carolina a coon dog known as a Morgan. Oh. Remember that, Fenneman. I will never forget it. <laughs> <laughs> so you now have $340. Now, uh, let's go. now what? Well, let's go for the big one. Okay. From what breed of goat is uh, genuine mohair obtained? Mm -hmm. Come on, guess. Uh, well, something like the Andalusian, but I forget his name. No, it's an Angora goat. Angora, yes. I knew it was Andalusian or something close to it. <laughs> well, you wind up with half the 340, you wind up with $170. Well, it's a kind of a tricky question. Anyway, it's... All right, George, uh, trot out the winning couple, huh? All right, Roger, here they are. Shirley Spencer and Henry McLemore, all set for the $2,000 question. You ready? During World War I, an English nurse was executed because she aided hundreds of Allied soldiers to escape from the Germans. For $2,000, who is this heroic English nurse? Edith Cavell. Wait. Edith Taking money from a baby, isn't it, Henry? <laughs> yeah. That's right. You're the last newspaper man we'll ever have on this show, huh? <laughs> we want $2,000 and how much in the quiz? Uh, $170 in the quiz. Twenty-one seventy, right. huh? What are you going to do with all that money, uh, Peggy? Shiley. <laughs> well, I think that I'll put some of it in the savings bank. And Another put some one. in my bank, too, huh? <laughs> All right. And, an, and I think I might buy a formal. A formal, yes, huh? Yes, for the next dance. Oh. When is that? <laughs> is that uh, near here? I think in an, a week. Uh -huh. Well, we'll hurry up and get going. And, Henry, what are you going to do with your swag? I'm going to buy a horse so next time I won't have to walk around. 